Okay, well, hello everybody and welcome back to the digital space in our series on radio drama. Now in the last lesson we looked at the four elements of radio drama, music, dialogue, sound effects and narration. Check it out here or here. I'm not quite sure where the thing's going to pop up. And in this lesson, your learning objective is to start the process of writing your own script for your very own radio drama. All right, let's get rid of this. How do I do this? I'm going to put it back over here. Brilliant. But before we do that, I want to start by asking you a question. How powerful can a radio drama actually be? Could a radio drama ever influence you to act, behave or think in a certain way? In every single performance, we are usually aware that we are an audience watching or listening to a radio drama in this case. But how often have you been drawn into the world that the performances have created for you as an audience? This happens in films, TV, the theatre, it happens in novels, it may even happen in conversations that you're having with somebody else where they draw you into a narrative that they're explaining. Stay with me. Why are we drawn into these things? Our brains are programmed to be interested in stories. Every single person is a storyteller and when they're telling you that story they paint a picture to kind of spark your curiosity and keep your attention. What's going to happen next? Is he going to survive? Is the hero going to turn into a villain? Will she escape? Is the world going to end? Are the flowers going to bloom in the summer? I don't know, whatever it is. We want to know what's going to happen next. And we allow ourselves to stay curious because we like to believe in the possibility that whatever we're watching or listening to might have some kind of resolution, some solution. And for a moment, we escape the reality that we are in, Matrix reference. And so we allow ourselves to believe it. And this is something called the suspension of disbelief. We suspend, we put on hold our disbelief, our internal voice that says, what you're watching or what you're listening to is not real. We put that on hold, we suspend it so that we allow ourselves to actually buy into what's happening. Ow. Ow. Am I dreaming? No, I am very much here. So with that in mind, task one. We're going to listen to another radio drama example, but this time I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Just listen to it and see what you can pick up from the dialogue and the sound effects, but more importantly, try to focus on how it makes you feel. I'm going to put my headphones on so I can immerse myself in the radio show. Plug it in. We are bringing you an eyewitness account of what's happening on the Wilmoth Farm, Grover's Mill, New Jersey. So there's narration there and a bit of music to underscore set the scene. It's like the news though. We now return you to Carl Phillips at Grover's Mill. Ladies and gentlemen, am I on? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, here I am, back of a stone wall that adjoins Mr. Wilmoth's garden. From here, I get a sweep of the whole scene. I'll give you every detail as long as I can talk and as long as I can see. The more state police have arrived. They're drawing up a cordon in front of the pit. About 30 of them. No need to push the crowd back now. They're willing to keep their distance. The captain's conferring with someone. Can't quite see who. Oh, yes, I believe it's Professor Pearson. Yes, it is. Now, now they've parted and the professor moves around one side, studying the object while the captain and two policemen advance with something in their hands. I can see it now. It's a white handkerchief. Tied to a pole, flag of truce. If those creatures know what that means, what anything means. Wait a minute, something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. What's that? There's a jet of flame springing from the mirror and it leaps right at the advancing men. It strikes them head on. Lord, they're turning into flames. Now the whole field's caught up by the woods, the fires, the. The gas tank, tanks of the automobiles are spreading everywhere. Coming this way now, about 20 yards to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. Evidently, there's some difficulty with our field transmission. However, we will return to that point at the earliest opportunity. We continue now with our piano interlude. So, what just happened? How did listening to that radio broadcast make you feel? How did the people that you heard sound themselves? Anxious? Frightened? Worried? Scared? Tortured? Did they sound like they were having fun? Did they sound calm? So that was a snippet from a 1938 radio drama called War of the World, following a reporter at the barn. And what we're hearing is Martians from outer space coming down and attacking everybody and basically just destroying mankind. Jolly. 
obviously was then later turned into an actual film with Tom Cruise where we do see aliens coming down, attacking the world. general kind of end of the world story. The radio drama all starts with just a very, very normal radio broadcast where there are live segments of music that are actually interrupted by news broadcasts about Mars explosions. And then during another one of these live music performances, another interruption happens where the reporter is doing a live report and we hear what you've just heard. Remember suspension of disbelief, where we're aware that we're watching or listening to something that's fake? Well, the audience of this radio show actually had no idea that what they were listening to was a radio drama. People listening to this genuinely believed that this was happening. Happening. People were just happy in their homes, just finished dinner, probably knitting some sort of scarf for the winter, tune in the radio. Suddenly, all these news broadcasts come through. It caused a mass panic in some of the communities. They would go to their front doors, they would look up at the sky expecting to see a Martian from Mars spitting fire into their street. They believed it, and it was all done through radio drama. So, task two. Now we know how powerful radio can be, we're going to start thinking about ideas for your own radio drama script. And to kick things off, I'm going to show you five different images. Write down as many different words, phrases, in, I don't know, 20 seconds for each image. Storyline, characters, sound effects, location, mood, atmosphere, you know, anything. Here is the first one. Bridge, miss, isolation, broken, shadows. Creepy. Murder just popped into my mind. I wonder if you've come up with anything else. Image number two. Full moon. Werewolf. Zombies. Love a good zombie film. Religion. What else pops into my head? Stars. Dreaming. Image number three. Alone. Overgrown. Almost like it kind of looks abandoned, doesn't it? Searching. Empty. Haunted. Okay, image number four. Hallway. Oh, there is like a single chair there. Dim lights. Dark. Nighttime. Doors. There we go. Number five. It looks like it's night, cold, because it's kind of like a blue light. It could be headlights, it might be a UFO. Fantastic. So again, these are just words to help prompt your ideas when you move on to the next task. So task three, what you're going to do next is you're going to take all of those words and those ideas and you're going to go into groups of four, maybe five, no more than five because too many chefs. And you're going to share all of these ideas with each other. Once you've done that, as a group, I want you to choose one of those images to work from as your stimulus for creating your radio drama story. Choose the one that has like the best collection of ideas, or maybe you've all written down the same thing for one of those images, or it might even just be one of the images that you all want to work with. Whatever one works for you. And then using that image and all of those words as a starting point, you're going to start to work on your story. Now, all of these images were all pretty mysterious mysterious, quite spooky, quite dark. But honestly, feel free to take it in a different direction if that's what works, that's absolutely fine. Now, this is probably gonna take you a few sessions. You're not gonna have a script straight away after working on this for like half an hour. You're gonna need to work on this over maybe two, three sessions. So start by outlining a rough storyline and the plot, maybe some basic characters, some twists and turns, narration, dialogue, maybe a few sound effects as well. But as you develop this, do keep Keep in mind that ideas will change. So don't be too precious about holding on to everything that you've just written down for those tasks. Work as a group to try and develop the ideas into one thing that keeps the listener's attention. Remember that's the main goal, suspend their disbelief. Once you've got a pretty good idea of where you're going, start writing down a script. Here's a quick example of one of the scripts from one of my groups. I can't remember which image they chose, but they titled it Night Crawler. Here in red, we've got their sound effects. We've got the narrator here speaking, sound effects door creaking. This was all about somebody being kidnapped. A really, really interesting and gripping storyline. But as you can see through there, we've, we've got each character and their dialogue. Everything there in red is a sound effect or music. Yeah, and what I actually loved at the end is that they didn't completely finish the entire storyline but they decided to leave it on a cliffhanger so the narrator actually ends by saying what will happen next will the kidnappers evade arrest tune in to next week's episode of night crawler so off the back of this lesson, that's what you're aiming to get to. Take a few sessions to do it. And once you're there, once you've got that script together, tune into the next lesson where we're going to be looking at creating your own sound effects. I'll see you very soon.